Where's my friend Kenny? Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, Erwin. Yes. You're hiding? Yeah. Uh, I decided not to hide. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, there you go. Good. Now I'm on mute. Good morning, Harvey. Oh, Robert, how are you? Oh, sure. oh Ted, bright and early. Bright and early. My God. That's it. Very good. Everyone's getting up earlier and earlier. Oh, there goes Bob is gone. Bye, Harvey. Bye bye. Who's going away? Harvey, you're disappearing? No, I'm still here. I'm gonna go soon. Yeah, I decided I'm gone. There you go. <laughs> all right, Ted, we can all watch you now. Okay. You're going to figure out what I'm having for breakfast while I'm here? <laughs> what do you think of the ceiling in the Keller's apartment? Watch <laughs> 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 over there and my pictures. Oh, wow. What is that? All right. Rabbi is here. Good morning. Let's go on you. Okay, everybody, we're on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Did anybody have a difficulty getting on? Morning. Nope. No. Okay, because I did. All right, <laughs> I'll have to speak to Larry or Andrea about it. Okay. All right, I will start today with Nun Bet Amud Aleph, where we left off. We're about one. About nine lines down, right? We're talking about animals going out on Shabbat, whether the uh, item on the animal is an adornment and therefore it would be prohibited for the animal to carry or use that going out from the, to the Rosh Hashanah on Shabbat or whether that item seems to be utilized uh, for other purposes, for leading the animal pulling the animal, things like that, okay? So that's where we are going to pick up. Now, it's not. We, Hatam, we learned elsewhere in a Mishnah, velo biritsuwa shebein karneha, okay? And not when there's a strap between the horns of the animal. This could refer to a goat, could refer to a cow, right? Amale Rabbi Yirmiya Bar Abba, okay, Rabbi Yirmiya Bar Abba, okay, is now uh, going to tell us the following, okay. Plige Ba Rab Ushmoel, there was an argument between Rab and Shmoel. Chad Amar, Bein Lenoi, Bein Meshamer, Asur, regardless of whether it's an ornament or it's a way of uh, protecting, guarding, in other words, securing the animal for whatever purpose, it's forbidden. Vechadamar, and the other says, lenoi asur, l'shamer mutar. Okay, namely that uh, as an ornament, it's forbidden, but for, the, for securing the animal, okay, it would be permitted. Okay, Amar Rav Yosef, says Rav Yosef, Tistayem, this shall we conclude, he says, maybe perhaps it can be proven. The Shmuel who da Amar Lenoi Asur, Lashamer Mutar, that it was the view of Shmuel who said that uh, 
the ornament was prohibited, and for security it was permitted. The Amar Rav Huna Bar Chia, as Rav Huna Bar Chia said, all right, Amar Shmuel in the name of Shmuel, Halacha Kechananya, that he said the law was like Chananya in that case. Okay, and uh, right, namely, right, Amar Ale Abai, and Abai responded, Ad Rabba, perhaps just the opposite. Okay, it's true. Tistayim, the Shmuel, who, the Amar Bein Lenoi, Bein Lishamer Asur. No, that maybe it was Shmuel who said, regardless if it was for adornment or for security, it was forbidden. The Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel. Okay, why? Because Rav Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel, right, the following. Machlifin lefnei Rebbe shel zo bezo mahu. That when they transposed, they changed over the discussion in the Mishnah. Okay, and asked the question to Rebbe. In other words, they said they changed the kind of equipment, okay, from one animal to another. Okay, what was the situation? Okay, that was the point. Amar Lefanav, Rabbi Yishmael Bar Rabbi Yossi, then responded, Kach Amar Abba, okay, that this is what his father, Rabbi Yossi, had said. Arba Behemot, Yotz Ut Hafsar, that there were four animals that could go out only with a bit, okay? Namely, Sus, the horse, a pered, a mule, the hagamal, the camel, Bachamor and the donkey. Right? Lav l'ma'ute gamal b'chatam. Didn't that come then to exclude a candle going, a camel going out with a nose ring? Okay. So the Gemara then says, if that's the case, sameha mekameha. Okay, delete, okay, the first statement before the other statement. Okay, and so the Gemara then challenges that. Why do you delete the first statement before the others, right? Okay, just the opposite. Okay, in other words, exclude the camel from being let out with a nose ring, delete the one on the other. Namely, what reason do you, do you delete the second statement because of the first? Maybe delete the first statement because of the second, right? The Ishkachan Shmuel, who da amar lenoi asur muta. Okay, that perhaps it was Shmuel who said that for adornment it was prohibited and for security it was acceptable. As was said, Rav Chia Bar Ashi, okay, where Rav Chia Bar Ashi, okay, says as follows: Amar Rav, in the name of Rav, Bein Lenoi, Bein Meshamer Asur, that he said it was Rav who said whether it was for adornment or for security, it was going to be prohibited. Rav Chia Bar Avin. And Rav Chia Ba'avin said, Amar Shmuel, in the name of Shmuel, Lenoi Asur, the Shamer Mutar. That it was Shmuel who said, for adornment it was prohibited, and for security it was acceptable. Now, an objection is going to be raised, as we see in the following, regarding a red heifer. Okay. they. So they raised the following objection. Kashra baleha b'mosra. If they simply tied up the red heifer with a cord, okay? In other words, with um, a, a somewhat loose, uh, if you will, uh, rope, okay? In that case, right? What happened? that would still be acceptable, 
right? And if you're going to think about the following, Masuihu, that that would be some sort of a burden on the animal, right? Certainly scripture, however, Torah tells us, Asher lo Allah aleha o, that for the red heifer, we say that clearly it's prohibited for it to have any kind of yoke or any kind of uh, item on it, right? Amar Rachmana, that's what the Torah says. Amar Abaye, okay? B'molicha me'ir la'ir. Okay, now maybe that was a situation where simply, okay, they were bringing the animal from one place to another, okay? That was all that was needed to uh, do that. Okay, that it would be safe then to have that around the animal's neck, right? Rabba Amar, says Rabba, Shani para didam meha yikarin. No, we do have to secure the animal better because its value is higher. Okay, it's worth more money. Ravina Amar, the Moredit. And Ravina gives another example, explanation, that he says, no, this was a red heifer that was very frisky, okay, right? And uh, because it was uh, quick to move around, okay, then uh, extra protection to hold on to the animal was necessary, and therefore it wouldn't be considered a burden or an adornment. <clears throat> okay. Let's go on, right? A new part of our Mishnah, Mishnah talked about a horse coming out with a chain around its neck. Asus Bashir Vachule. And then it referred to other animals that also had a chain around its neck. And of course, is that an adornment or is that simply a way of, let's say, leading the animal out from the stall, okay? So <clears> the <throat> Gemara asks, "Mai yotzin, umai nimshachin." What are we talking about when it says that the animal may simply go out with the chain, and that the chain is okay, or and that the chain is around it? Okay, in this case, right, which uh, would seem to be permitted, or that the chain that will be led out by a chain. Amar Rav Huna, says Rav Huna, okay? O yotz in kruchin, it means if it's wrapped around its neck, o nim shachin, or if it's simply there, a single chain to be pulled, laid the animal out. Shmuel Amar, yotz in nim shachin, and Shmuel explained it, okay? as that they go out by leading the animal by the chain, okay? Ve'en yotzi'in kuchin. But they cannot let the animal simply go out on its own with the chain wrapped around its neck. Tana, And we have a brighter that comes and teaches. Yotzi'in kuchin limshach. That it's permissible for the horse to go out with a chain around its neck, okay, in order to be led, okay? Okay, and so if it's loose enough, the person can sort of insert their hand underneath the chain, okay, between the chain and the animal's neck, grab the chain, and then lead the animal out in that manner, okay? Amar Rav Yosef, says Rav Yosef, the following, Chazina laho, le'egle debe Rav, Huna, I once saw, he said, that the calves of the house of Rav Huna, okay, yotzein ba'af sarehen kruchin b'shabbat, that they went out with cords or bits round, wound about there, Okay, on Shabbat. Ki'ata Ravdimi, when Ravdimi came, okay, 
what had happened. Amar, he says, Rav Chinina, Rabbi Chinina, that Rabbi Chinina said, Molot shall bait Rebbe, that the mules of Rebbe's household, <coughs> right? Yotzod, Ba'afsa, Rehen, B'Shabbat. They went out with the bits, with their reins on them on Shabbat. Ibayalahu. So the rabbis then discussed and raised the question. If those examples, krichin o nimshachin, okay, were they wrapped around their neck? Was that the purpose? And therefore it may be considered an adornment, or was that used simply to lead the animals out? Tashma. Listen to the following bright, that says the Gemara. Ki ata rav Shmuel bar Yehuda, Amar Rabbi Chanina, that when Shmuel ben Yehuda came, he said in Rabbi Chanina's name the following, right? Molot shall bait Rabbi, Yotz ot ba'afsarehen, kruchim b'shabbat, that the mules of the house of Rabbi went out with their bits, with their reins around them, kruchim, right, wrapped around them on Shabbat. Amruha Rabbanan Kame the Rab Asi, and therefore the rabbi said before Rab Asi the following Ha, the Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda Lo Tzricha, that this statement of Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda, that the Rebbe's mules went out with their bits or reins wrapped around them on Shabbat, doesn't seem necessary. Mi the Rav Dimi Nafka that we could have learned that, okay, from the statement of Rav Dimi, right? So the Gemara then continues, the Isa Gadatach, the Rav Dimi Nimshachin Ka'amar, okay, right? If you were of the opinion that Rav Dimi was referring to the animals being able to be led, Ka'amar, right? That's what he was talking about. Me the Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel Nafka. Okay, in that case, we could say it would follow from Rav Yehuda's statement in Samuel's name, right? For Rav Yehuda said in the name of Samuel, right? The Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel Machlifin Hayu Lefnei Rebbe that they switched it. Okay, the uh, discussion of what item was on what animal before Rebbe, shel zo mahu. That was the question they asked. And Amar lefanav Rabbi Yishmael bar Yossi. And then Rabbi Yishmael bar Yossi responded, kach amar abba, this is what father said, arba behimot yotzot ba'afsar, hasus vahapered vahagamal vahachamor. Okay, that he said that his father had ruled that uh, four animals could go out with a bit, a horse, a mule, a camel, and a donkey. A marlaho, Rav Asi. And that's what Rav Asi then said, it's Tarikh Laho. No, maybe that statement of Rav Yehuda in the name of Shmuel was necessary. Okay? Why? Right? For the following. The imi the Rav Yehuda Nafka, because if we had only tried to learn it from Rav Yehuda's statement, Hava Mina, I might have thought to say, Amar Lefanav, that when Rav Ishmael the Rabbi Yossi made that declaration of what his father had taught, Veloki Blamine, okay, and the Rebbe maybe didn't accept it, okay. Kamash Malan, the Rav Dimi. Therefore, it comes to tell us that Rav Dimi's statement comes to tell us that indeed Rebbe did accept that as the Halacha. Ve'i the Rav Dimi hava Amina. And if I had only had the statement which Rav Dimi had made, right? Hava Amina, I might have said, Hani Mili. Nimshachim, that in that case, maybe it only applied if they were using those 
items for leading the animal out. Aval kruchin, lo, but if the item was wrapped around the neck of the animal, no, that wouldn't have been the case. Kamash malan, therefore comes to teach us the Rav Shmuel bar Rav Yehuda, what Rav Shmuel bar Yam Yehuda was informing us. Okay, let's go on now uh, to the next part of our Mishnah, where it talked about those uh, chains around the neck of the animal. If it became tame, it could be sprinkled, okay, in place, right? So the Gemara cites the Memra, okay, the Bnei, right, Umazin Alehem, Betovlin Bimkomam, that they can sprinkle them in place and they can be immersed in their place. La Memra, the Bnei Kibule Tuma Minhu. Does this mean to say that these chains are capable of becoming Tame? Vahatnan. Right? But haven't we learned elsewhere in another uh, statement, in another brighter, Tabat Adam Tmea, okay, that uh, a man's ring can become Tame, right? Utabat Behema, Bekelim, Beshar Kohatabaot. But any ring of an animal or any ring associated with a utensil, Tahorot that they are tahor, they're pure. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Nafka. So we find, however, that Rabbi Yitzchak Nafka on the top of Amud Bet then tells us as follows. Bibian minoy adam lenoi behema. We're talking about a kind of ring that was transferred from being uh, worn by humans to being utilized uh, for animals, an adornment for animals, okay? Um, that when they become, when they're used for animals, if they became unclean for a human being, okay, they would retain their impurity if still used for an animal, okay? But Rav Yosef Amar, says Rav Yosef, or il va'adam Moshech bohem et ha since it's possible, says Rav Yosef, okay, that they become unclean because the person has contact with them when he leads the animals. Me lo tanya, for why wasn't it not a situation that we have a brighter that teaches us elsewhere the following? Makel shel behema. Shematechet, if we have a staff or a rod made of uh, metal, okay, and it's used, makabel tuma, that it can, you, it can re- become uh, subject to tuma. Matam, what's the reasoning? Oil v'adam rodebahem, since a person uses it to subjugate, to direct. Okay, the animals. Hachanami, here too. Ho'il v'adam moshech bahem. Here too, since the person uses it to control or subjugate the animal by leading it out. Let's go on. Back now from our Mishnah. V'tovlim b'mkomam. And we say that they can immerse those uh, chains, okay, that are in place, right? While it's still on the animal. So the Gemara asks, Vaha'ika chatzitza. Isn't there some sort of uh, uh, break, intervention? Okay, there, right? So the Gemara answers, Amar Rav Ami, Bashir Rit Khan. It's when the owner has struck these rings of the chain with a hammer and flattened them out so that there's more space between each individual link 
and therefore, in that way, okay, it's able to change the status of the chain, and therefore it's no longer a considered a viable utensil, and thus is not able to become tummy. Okay. Lema, Rabbi Ami, Kirav Yosei Svirale. Shall we therefore say that Rav Ami is of the same view, of same opinion as Rav Yosef? The Ika Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha, like that of Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha, the Amar Bavian Minoy Adam Lanoi Behema, who said that it's a situation where he's transferred this adornment of a person to become an adornment of an animal. Kevan David Khan, that since he has pounded and struck these uh, uh, links of the chain, Avad Bahom that he's done a particular act to them, Uparchala Tumaminaihu, and therefore he's removed any possibility of Tuma. The Tuma has vanished from them. The Tznan as we taught elsewhere, okay, in another Mishnah, kol hakelim yordin lidei tumatan b'machshava, that it's possible that any utensil, okay, will, uh, <coughs> let's say, become uh, subject to, okay, the possibility of tuma by a means of a mental act. In other words, if the artisan is working on making a item and he decides that that uh, item okay, is completed and finished, it therefore renders it a viable utensil and which would therefore make it susceptible to tuma. Ve'en olim mitumatan but it does not uh, give up, let's say, its status of possible tuma unless some sort of physical, further physical act is required. Savala okay. Rabbi Yehuda, says the Gemara. No, it must be that Rabbi Ami holds to a similar opinion to that of Rabbi Yehuda. The Amar ma'asel etakein love ma'asel. Okay, that an act to improve the object doesn't, is not a viable act enough to remove the tumor. The Tanya, as taught bright by Rabbi Yehuda, says, lo amar shinui ma'aseh letaken ele lekalkeo that Rabbi Yehuda said that there's the act that changes the status of the utensil cannot be to improve it, it must be instead to uh, ruin it, okay? To make it less viable, okay? So the Gemara now says to us, b'matnita tani b'mechulalim, okay? And here it says our Mishnah is referring to uh, chains where the links are movable, okay? That they can become unclean, okay, as uh, human ornaments. But when they are made into animal ornaments, they cannot become unclean, even though they may have been unclean before, okay? Let's go on now with a new, slightly new topic, right? The following. Sha'al tamid echad mi galil ha'el yom at Rabbi Eliezer, or Rabbi Eliezer, okay? That a certain student from the north, the upper Galilee, asked. In other words, it could be that he uh, did not hear a full lesson in the base midrash one day, or that he had learned something while he was there, but now that he was in the 
base midrash there in uh, with every, all the other sages, he wanted a clarification. Shamati, he said, I learned, shecholkin bein tabat letabat, that it's acceptable to draw a distinction between one ring and another. Okay. Okay, and he wants to know what that is. Amarlo, so Rabbi Elazar responds, Shema lo shamat, ela le'inyan shabbat. Perhaps you only learned it, okay, in regards to laws of the Shabbos, okay, where there's a difference between a, what we'll call for the moment, a signet ring and an ordinary ring, as we're going to see in a moment. Right. That if, however, we're talking about regarding impurities, both kind, both this kind and that kind are alike. Okay. Asks the Gemara, and do we really say? that any kind of a ring, okay, is the same in regards to Tuma, but aren't we, haven't we been taught in another Mishnah, Tabad Adam Tmeha, that the ring of a person is susceptible to Tuma, the Tabad Behema, the Kelim Bishar Kol Hatabaot Tahorot, but the ring of an animal or a ring on a utensil or other kinds of rings are not subject to uh, impurity. Ki ka'amarle ihunami adam ka'amarle, says the Gemara, that when Rabbi Elazar told him this, he told it in regards to rings that pertain to a person, okay? Okay, that in regards to a person, okay, personal rings are the same, okay, right. that are all right. So therefore, for example, a ring made to uh, fasten clothes, okay, as a belt, for example, a belt buckle, would not be tummy. Bahatanya, says the Gemara. Right? What we taught, Tabat, Shehitkina, Lachgor Bamatnav, okay, a ring that was used, established to be a kind of belt buckle, okay, Vulakasher, Ben, Ba, Ben Ktefav, or to use it as uh, a buckle, for example, to uh, carry something on his back or on his shoulders, okay, a shoulder bag, for example, tohora, velo amru tamea, that that's pure, and we didn't say it becomes a tamea, okay? So the Gemara answers, ela shel etzba bilvad. No, he was really referring to only finger rings. Kika amarle, when he told it to him, ihunami da etzba ka'amarle, that what he was talking really about was primarily finger rings. So Gemara asks, hu da etzba da vada achati, and do we say that a finger ring of any kind or all kinds, that's what happens, that it becomes tame? Vahatnan. But haven't we been taught in another Mishnah? Tabat shel matechet, the chotma shel almog, a ring that's made out of metal, but it's seal, okay? The uh, part of the signet, for example, that's made out of coral. Tmeahi, that is considered tmeah. Shel almog, the chotma shel matechet, but if the ring is made out of coral and its seal is metal, tahora, 
Okay, it is tohor. It is pure. Ki ka'amale, and when he told him this, ihunami kula shema techet ka'amale. <coughs> he was talking primarily about a ring that was in, primarily made out of metal. <coughs> Excuse me. Va'otsha. And so the student asked again another question. Shamati shecholkin be'machat b'machat. I learned, he said, that we make a difference between one kind of needle and another kind of needle. Amarle. So he said to him, Shema lo shamat, ela le'inyan shabbat. Again, perhaps you only learn this in regards to the issue of <coughs> Shabbat, whether one could carry a needle into the public domain or into the private domain, and the needle had an eye on it. Okay, if, and if it does not have an eye, okay, is that not considered a viable utensil? And therefore, that's a different issue. Amarle. Shema lo shamat ele le inyan shabbat, we said. De i le inyan tuma da veda echati. But in regards to tuma, this kind and this kind see, are the same. So the Gemara again asks, le inyan tuma da veda achati. And do we say, in regards to tuma, this kind and this kind are they really the same? But aren't we taught again, right, in another statement, another Mishnah? Machat shenital chora, okay, a, a uh, needle, okay, that uh, <clears throat> in this case, okay, the eye of the needle, let's call it, okay, is been removed. O uktsa or let's say the point of the needle has broken off. Tahora, it's considered tahora. In other words, it's no longer a usable utensil, and therefore it cannot be makabel tuma. Kika amarla, when he said to him, when he gave him the answer, bishlema, he was talking about a complete, a whole needle, okay? So now we'll ask if it's a whole needle, a complete, I got a point, it's got an eye, all right? We say that that's uh, the same, that, Hello? what's that? Vahatna. Okay, but aren't we taught there? Machat, Shehealta, Chaluda. What about a situation? where the needle is rusty. If this deters, right, from being able to do the proper sewing, in other words, it's no longer a good utensil, tahora, it's tahora. V'im lav tmeah, and if not, then it's tmeah. V'amre debe rabiyana, and they said in the academy, Okay, of Rabbi Yanai, right? Vahu Shirishuma Nika. That's when the mark, okay, of the sewing left on the product. In other words, you can see the rusty mark, all right? Ki ka'amarle b'shifa ka'amarle. And he, what was he talking about was where it was smooth, where there was an easy there was no marks left on the garment from the sewing. Right? So okay, and uh, when it's smooth, we say that's the same. Bahatanya, but haven't we been taught again? Right? Machat, bein nikuva, bein ena nikuva, a needle, whether it has an eye or it doesn't have an eye, mutar letaltala b'shabbat, it's permitted to carry it on Shabbat, to handle it on Shabbat, okay? Velo amrinan 
nekuva, ele le'inyan tuma bilvad, and we only applied the issue of a needle, okay, with an eye in regards to the situation of tuma. Ha, tigama abaye, and uh, abaye interpreted this aliba de raba begalme, okay. He interpreted it similar to the view of Rabbah that we're talking about Galme, when a, uh, a utensil is not finished, okay? If it's an unfinished uh, item, okay? All right, in other words, the hole hasn't been punched in. It cannot, it's not a complete utensil, and therefore it's not subject to too much, okay? Let's just finish up the rest of the Amud in the time we've got left with a new Mishnah. Still talking about animals going out on Shabbat. Okay, Matbitin, our new Mishnah teaches, Chamor yotze b'mirda'at b'zman shahik shurabo. A donkey can go out with its, let's call it a saddle cloth, okay? when it is tied around it. Zicharim, male rams, yotzim levuvim. Okay, they go out levuvim, they go out in pairs, or coupled. Rechalot, yuz, yotz out, they go out. Shechu zot, kivulot, ukivunot. They go out Okay, in those three categories, okay, and uh, just uh, the Gemara is going to discuss it in more detail, but it seems they go out either <coughs> with their hindquarters exposed or their hindquarters tied, okay, or their hindquarters covered, okay. Ha'izim regarding goats, tsrurot, <coughs> they go out, okay, with their udders tied up. Rabbi Yossi oser bekulan, and Rabbi Yossi forbids with all of them, chutz men harechalim, with the exception, okay, of the yus hakevunot, okay, where they have their udders tied up, okay. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda then says, Izim, regarding the goats, Yotz Ot Shurot, the Yavesh, they go out with their udders tied up in order to prevent them to dry up their sources of milk, in order, which is going to allow them to dry up their milk supply so they're able to have uh, uh, relations with other animals, with other goats, avalo mechalev, but not in order to save their milk. And the Gemara tomorrow will pick up on Nun Gimel with the discussion of what these items meant when they said that parts of the animal could be tied up. Everybody have a good day. And to stay well, everyone. Okay. You too. Bye bye. Thank you, Rabbi. Okay. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. So long. <laughs>